an ambition towards some sort of success in a career, um, you know, whether that's financial success or power within a career, a certain amount of standing in a career. Um, and often that's, that's a, um, there's some sense of um, perverseness in that to a degree. But the other way I think of ambition, or greed in that sense, you know, naked ambition. Or... But the way I like to think of ambition the most is, um, and we were probably talking about this earlier too, is as dreaming, is that sense of um, having something that you love dearly or are passionate about, and moving towards that, being driven towards that, leaning forwards on an incline towards that. Um, yeah, and that doesn't have that same pejorative sense to the word, I think, as the first ambition I talked about. Um, and, I, and I prefer to think of that as dreaming, and I think dreaming's part of being human. If it's dreaming about going up to the store for a bottle of milk and the walk on the way up there, you know. Um, with a dream towards doing nothing for a day. <laughs> um, it can be small, tiny, local dreams for a day, uh, for the week, um, or for a life. Things that want to be achieved or experienced. You can look at it two ways. It's my job as a poet to dream. But more so, I suspect, I dreamed, therefore I ended up a poet, you know. And I just finished writing a poem. And and one of the lines is, poetry and medicine are both the sons of dreaming. And because they both come from that same, well, medicine for me now comes from that same place as of dreaming as poetry. Um, and both ways of trying to know something, understand something. Um, I'm not much of the first ambition. I wish I kind of was <laughs> sometimes. Um, yeah, not so much. The older and uglier I get, I think, the less ambitious I am uh, in terms of, you know, uh, running the world. I don't ever remember a time in my life where I wasn't wide-eyed and dreaming, ever. From my first sentient moments, um, I feel like I've lived life with a wow. Um, and the image I have of myself is a big brown-eyed kid. Um, reading book in bed in secret when everyone else was gone and quiet and being transported um, to ancient Rome or Greece um, or with Leonidas fighting with the 300 you know um, uh, or you know somewhere in England because those were my dreamings. <laughs> um, or fighting for God, too, you know, the context of growing up Seventh-day Adventist, you know, it's like, who, who will go for me? You know, so send I you. I'll go, God! <laughs> Let, I'll go, I'll convert them! Um, that was a powerful dreaming, too. So, you know, all, so that... That, that was encouraged, so I grew up in an, a dreaming, encouraging, you know, a dream encouraging culture in that sense. And I talked earlier, I think of my mum, who was the least ambitious in that sense of the word person that I know, and yet saves her pension to help take us on holidays, regardless of, if it, of us trying to pay that, but she lives her life tip forward to that dreaming that she's we're going to go on a holiday and the family's going to gather around her and we're going to laugh and have fun and it's going to be warm and and she still insists on paying for us like 
like we're five years old, you know, going up to the shop for a lolly. Um, and yeah, just, you know, and that's not a joke, like that's significant saving for her uh, on a fixed income. And so in one sense, she's not ambitious at all, in the other, hugely ambitious or dreaming for her family. The ambition of a number of young people I could think of immediately at the clinic who struggle to lift out of sadness for the day. Who will text me and say, my day is shit already. This has happened and this has happened. And they get, and, and horrendous things have happened to them. Horrendous things uh, that bring those in, that bring those sadnesses into their lives but they get up every day and they have a crack. You know, my old dad with Parkinson's disease when he was alive, his life was just, you know, eaten out with the Parkinson's. And he, <laughs> he would get on his bike and try and ride to the shops. And um, people would think he was drunk. And, and he would carry on. People who lived with those pains. Loss, people who lived with a loss. Um, they go on. That's a, that's a dreaming, that's an ambition to st standing still sometimes for people is an ambition not to be drowned. So I see it in the context of medicine. Sometimes I think that's the bravest ambition of all. It's like the refusal to die, the refusal to, to give in to the waves of sorrow. Although I'm vain enough to want to be a great poet, a great political leader, a fabulously wealthy businessman, and an all-black. I could do all those as well. <laughs> I've come to terms and to grow my hair back. How's that? To be to, to have a mullet, that would be a, a, a great ambition. Or just to have hair that I could do something with. But the most ruthless, ruthless ambition I can't stress enough is for the poem, the poem, the poem, the poem, the poem, to make it light. And I, I, look, I get it wrong so often, but now and then, to make a thing sing, I know of nothing that gives me greater pleasure, nor occupies my thinking so often. And I'll go on in my life, being a doctor, being a dad, mowing the lawns, water blasting the house, being a son and a brother, um, having opinions, being a big mouth. But all the time that's that big compared to this much dreaming about the poem always.